Hey guys, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. So I'm going to show you how we're going to, do, going to do a stamp concrete finish on this concrete patio. Now this is part two of a, of a part three series. So if you haven't seen part one yet where we actually pour the concrete for this patio, I'll have it pop up right up here up top. You can go check that out if you want to. But right now we're going to just stamp it. And you know, there's a lot of there's a lot that goes on in between, you know, after you get it poured and before you stamp it that I'm not showing here. So I just wanted to show you guys how we put a stamp finish on this though. So see what Darren's doing is he's throwing on a release agent, a release powder, and that keeps the stamps from sticking to the concrete. Usually these guys got mass. I didn't have any mass in the truck today. So uh, we usually always carry a box of them. So they just, unfortunately, they're going to have to tough it out without a mask today. But it's always a good idea to wear masks when you're using that release powder. So Darren's throwing the release powder on. Like I said, that keeps the stamps from sticking to the surface. And it helps add like a secondary antiquing kind of color to the finish when we're all done. We're using a random stone kind of stamp in this pattern. So when we get all done, it's going to look like random stones. And it's a really cool looking stamp pattern. And depending on what colors you use, like like we put a we put a dark gray integral color in the concrete when we poured the concrete. And we're throwing on that release powder as a charcoal, so it's almost like black. Um, so it's gonna give the rocks like a grayish, blackish look that which kind of goes with the theme of their house. As you can see, the house the siding on the house is kind of on the grayish side, so they wanted they wanted something earthy, something that's gonna like complement the house, and that's what we came up with. So we got a we got a set of stamps here. That's I think we have about eleven of them total. Um, nine of them are really rigid, really kind of like a thick rubber, and two of them are are a little more flexible that we use to go up against the house. This is Darren and Luke here. These guys are they're just top notch stamp concrete guys. They uh, they can stamp a lot of concrete by themselves. They're really good at what they do. And you know, I'm really lucky to have them as employees, so I don't even have to be there for them guys to do this and do it right. They know what they're doing. They've been doing this a long, long time. So what we're doing, you know, we lay them down. We're stamp just the concrete's soft enough still so we can tamp in the pattern with our feet. As you can see, Luke has a, a special set of shoes on he's wearing. So he can still wear his rubber boots and those shoes are really flat soled shoes. That way the heels from his boots don't don't sink down into the concrete too much and leave a like a divot in the concrete. And Darren's just wearing flat soled sneakers, so it's not that much of a big deal when you're wearing flat flat sneakers like that. So what they're doing is they're just working their way across the slab. They continue Continue to pour some more release powder on it. Luckily the wind's blowing the right way. That's kind of blowing it away from them Darren's got a an edge roller there that has the Texture on it so he can roll up against the edge of the house and get some texture on the concrete Before they lay the stamp down It just helps make it a little easier to stamp up against the house makes it a little faster We'll do that on the outside edge too this is about 16 feet wide, this patio, you know, and those stamps are roughly, you know, they're 32 to 36 inches. So you want to have plenty of them. It's nice. It makes it easier when you have enough to go completely all the way across the slab like this. And then you have a few extra to start your next row before you start pulling the other ones up. It just helps keep things in line a little better. It makes the process go a little better. Sometimes as you're tamping these stamps, they want to run on you a little bit and move a little bit. So if you've always got some in behind them in place, it just helps ensure that they're not moving on you too much. You can, you can notice it and pick it up faster if they do start to move on you and correct it. So these guys are just working at a, a nice steady pace. You know, they know depending on what the temperature is outside, how much sun is on this, and how large of an area they have to do, they know by experience just how fast they have to do this. You know, and if, you know, for you guys watching, if this really intrigues you, if this is something you want to learn, 
I actually have a course where I teach you how to do this down. I'll have it down in the description of the video so you can click on it, you know, and, and I, you know, we, I had to be trained to do this. It just didn't come normal for me. And I just didn't go out and say, Hey, I'm going to go get some stamps and go stamp somebody's patio without knowing what I'm doing. You know, I had to learn from somebody. I had to take training, but in order for me to take it, I had to travel to do it, you know, either, either travel for a weekend to somebody's somebody's seminar or workshop that costs thousands of dollars or you know go work for somebody that does this for a while and learn how to do it well what I did was I took a bunch of my my jobs like this and I made a training course for you guys that want to learn how to do this so you can get that course go through it and it'll give you a really good idea about how to start stamping concrete I mean I it's step by step I, uh, I explain all the little details and intricate things that you learn from experience in that course. So it should really help you get started. Now, there's nothing that's going to replace actual on-job experience like this. So, I mean, you could take that training course and then you could go practice on a slab at your, either at your own house or, let's say, at the concrete plant. You know, where you get your concrete from, the concrete plant, they always have trucks coming back during the day that has some concrete left on them. So you could go there and talk to the dispatcher and just say, hey, you know, I wanna form up a little slab outside. I wanna practice on some concrete. When one of the trucks comes back with half a yard on them or a yard on it, can I can I dump it in this, this form I got and practice some stamping? I, I don't see why they wouldn't say yes to that. If it, they're just gonna either dump it out or, or put it in a block anyway. But Anyway, I, I just thought I could make you guys a course for a ton less money to help teach you guys. And then you can figure out a way to practice on your own before you go do it for somebody else. Because there's a lot of really good money in stamping if you learn how to do it. Um, you know, when I first started out, I first started out just pouring concrete floors. We did floors, we did, we did slabs, and that was it for quite a few years. And then we added stamping to that. And... You can make a lot more money per square foot stamping than you can just pouring concrete floors and stuff like that. So it it takes it doesn't take anywhere near as much volume of concrete to make a lot more money with this. So I just wanted to introduce you guys to that, and I figured out the best way for me to do that without you coming to work for me is to make that course for you. So go down there and check it out if you want. You can see Darren and Luke, they're just slowly working their way across. Getting, they got that, that little bit bigger section done. This was about a 600 square foot patio. So, I mean, it wasn't huge. It wasn't small, but it wasn't huge. Um, generally, when the three of us are together out in the sun, we don't tackle too much more than, let's say, between 1,000 and 1,500 square feet with the three of us at, at one shot. You know, and we're really working when it's when it's something that size. So with two guys, again, it depends on temperature, depends on con the conditions, where the sun is, and all that. You know, you don't want to take bite off too much more than you can chew here, because you you only have one chance to do this right. <laughs> and sometimes, like with these stamps, I, I don't know, it's it's hard for you to notice, but they got pretty good sized grooves in them in between those random stones. So if the concrete starts to get a little firm on you, the grooves, you know, the grout lines in between the stones, they start to, uh, to get harder and harder to press into the surface of the concrete. You can see when, when these guys get done, before they get done here, they're going to use uh, what we call a tamper, and they're going to start tamping those stamps because as they get towards the end, it, the concrete's getting firmer and firmer. This took them from the time they started stamping to the time they got done. It took these two guys about an hour in time to finish this by themselves. Just working steady, you know, one stamp at a time. Pick it up, set it down. Make sure you got good impression in the stamp. So the process isn't really fast. And you got to know just how long you have to get from one end to the other. You can see the the concrete firmed up enough now, so Luke could take those those flat-soled shoes off and just use his his boots and not worry about 
his heels, you know, sinking in too far. So it's already firmed up quite a bit. Darren's using that roller. That roller is a, is a really good tool to have. If you guys that do stamp concrete, you don't have one of those rollers yet. They make them in different sizes and different textures. So you can get one. Now you can see Luke went and got the tamper there. Now they're going to start tamping. It's starting to get firm. But those rollers, they come in all kinds of different textures and sizes. 18 inches is, I think, the largest I've seen for like a little hand one like that. Now all that release and powder and stuff we're getting on the house, that's all going to wash off later on. You'll see that on another video I'm doing. We could have we could have masked that all off with plastic, and we used to. We used to do that a lot. But what we found is even when you mask it off and tape it, you still that release powder gets everywhere. You still get it on there. It gets up under the plastic no matter what. So it's almost like you're taking the time to do all that masking for nothing is what we found. And we found it's just easier just not to mask and then just wash it later with, you know, pressure washer, Dawn dish detergent, and then one other little secret thing we use to get it off. It gets it off anything. So, um, and that's in the, in the course, that's in the stamp concrete course, that other little secret method for cleaning. So I don't want to give you, give away all my secrets here, guys. But that's why we don't mask hardly anything off anymore because we know we can just wash it off and clean it. And we don't have to spend an hour or two masking stuff off. You can see they're really working at tamping that now. I mean, the two of them, as good as they are, as experienced as they are, getting down to the end of this patio now, that stuff's firming up on them pretty good. So again, my name's Mike Day. If this is your first time watching me, this is what my channel is about. It's all about all different kinds of concrete. So if you like that kind of stuff, you know, go ahead down there and subscribe. If you like the video, you know, hit please hit the like button. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down in the comments. I, I do try to get back to as many comments as I can. Uh, the more the channel grows, the harder it is to get back to everybody. But I really appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys commenting and watching and subscribing. It's a... Uh, it's, turned it into a really cool community um, so this is I just wanted to show you the finish on this I'll have the video popping up at the end that shows you again how we poured this patio so if you're thinking of doing some type of concrete patio out in your backyard it'll give you an idea what it takes to pour the concrete like this and then coming up on the next video I'm going to show you just you know how we clean concrete how, where do you take it from this step what happens after this is what I'm going to show you to finish this off on the next video. So again, you know, come on back and watch that. And I appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you on the next one, guys.